In this video, I'm going to show you how to um, do two-way analysis of variance in Excel. We covered this question in the classroom where we were looking at the three portions of, a, of SAT scores. We took six students, and then for each of the students, we looked at the critical reading, mathematics, and writing. And we wanted to determine to what extent that there was a difference in the mean performance on the various uh, portions. Are they the same versus not the same? Um, I'm just going to show you how we can do the calculations. Now, the students represent the blocks, and then, of course, the three portions represent the treatments. What I will then do here is um, put uh, some additional information that will help me with my calculations. So the first thing is to put the number of blocks, so that is B, and then I want to get the um, mean for the different treatments, so I'll call it mean of treatment J, mean J, and then the partial sum of squares, SS, J. So J represents the treatments, right? We have three columns. Do you remember J is columns? I would be rows. Over here, I would put a K, which is the number of um, treatments in each block. So basically, we have three treatments per block. And then we have the mean of the row, which is basically the mean of a block, which is mean I, because remember, the rows are I's. And the partial sum of squares, and when I say partial is that for each row, I would calculate a sum of squares based on that formula, but um, it is only for one row. So I would need to repeat that for all six rows before I can get the sum of squares due to the blocks. So we're going to call it SS for row I. Okay. So given that uh, K is equal to 3, which means that we have um, three treatments, I could simply put 3 right in here. And um, in terms of blocks, we have six blocks per, per sample for each of the different treatments. We have um, six blocks or six observations, so that would be six, all right? And we could simply just fill, fill this. Now, I don't want to fill this in the color, so I'm going to just change that a bit to none. Uh, let me undo this. You don't have to worry about this formatting. I'm just trying to no fill. There you go. And no fill. All right. So in terms of the means, let's find means. We're going to need the X bar I's. So not mean. We need average. A, V, R, A, G, E. And which we'll is be the average of these three values. And of course, that's the beauty of Excel. You could just do this right here. Done. Same thing. We want the average for each of the treatments or for the columns. So average. And we simply select the six. And if we go across here like this, away we go. So now we have the block means and then the treatment means. So these are treatment means down here, our block means are over here. The formula for the partial SS is that uh, we would take K multiplied by the difference between the grand mean and the um, block mean squared. So the formula will just sort of follow that. But before we do this, let us um, uh, put some additional values that we're going to need right here. Let's get the sum of the x's. Let's get sum squared x. So sum squared x. And then I'll put here sum of x. All right? We're going to need that because we have to calculate the overall uh, mean for the sample. But we also need to calculate the SST, which requires the sum of the x's and the sum of the x squared. So we'll certainly do that. So let's find the grand mean. The grand mean, 
I could uh, I could take the sum of the x's and then divide by 18, or I could simply just take the average of all of these values. So let's do them. Actually, sorry, let's let's do this again. I'm going to do this in this order right here. So let's start off with the sum of the x's equal to sum of all of these values right here. Okay. And get back to here. And then we uh, we have that sum squared equal to sum sq sum squared of all of these numbers. And here we go. Grand mean is equal to average of all of these numbers right here. Same 18 numbers. And here we go. We could kind of reduce this if we wanted to. Uh, let's see here. Well, let's move this aside a bit. We could probably reduce that, but let me not go outside for now. Okay, so we have uh, this data right here. Now we want to get the partial SS values. So this would be equal to B times the column mean or the treatment mean minus the grand mean and I'm going to lock that grand mean dollar sign and dollar sign and I'm going to square that term on the outside right so here we go we found the partial SS or sum of squares. So that 16.67 is for critical reading, 770 is for mathematics, and 560 is for writing. We will do exactly the same thing over here, but this time we use K, which is 3, times the block mean minus the grand mean right here. Now, grand mean again is still B15. Um, so I'm going to put dollar sign B, dollar sign 15. And square that. So here we go. We now have the partial SS for student one or block one, and we can simply put it all down here. So if I add it all up together, I'm going to add this, which is equal to sum of these partial SSs, I will get SSBL. So this is my SSBL. Okay, and now I need I need to get um, SSTR, which is the sum of these three values right here. So let's make this sum of these three values. And that gives me SSTR treatments. Now I'm going to need as well um, SST and then not SSTR, but SST. And then we're going to find SSE as well. So to find SST, you remember it is basically using the formula for SSX. That formula for SSX is sum of X squared minus sum of X all squared over N, my sample size. So my sum of my X squared is this value right here, minus the sum of X all squared. What's the sum of X all squared? This value raised to the power of 2, divided by 18, right? That's the over n, and that should give me 65798. So my SSE would be SST subtract SSBL plus SSTR. So this is equal to SST minus 
the sum, or I could just say this value plus this value. And that gives me 1,200 right here. So now I have SSBL, SSTR, SSE, and SST. All right. So I have pretty much everything that I need. And then now let's turn around and calculate our table. So I'm going to use sources of variation, SOV, the SS values, the degrees of freedom values, MS values, F value, F critical value, and P value. Yeah, P value. So sources of variation will be treatments, um, blocks, error, and total. All right. So we could just simply put those values in here. Treatments would be this value. I'm putting this so that just in case we want to change these numbers, we don't have to change anything. Everything will be automatically calculated for us. Blocks would be this value right here. The error term would be this value. And total would be equal to this value right here. Good. Degrees of freedom. For treatments, we know it's K minus 1. K is 3, so therefore that's 2. Degrees of freedom over here is uh, B minus 1. We have 6 blocks, so 6 minus 1 is 5. And then for the error is K minus 1 times B minus 1, which means 2 times 5. That is equal to 10. And total is equal to, we don't, it's just the sum of all of these, equal to sum, and it should give me n minus 1, all right, 17. And the ms values, mean square, would be ss divided by degrees of freedom. So if I repeat, if I just do this, we get all the values that we're looking for because this MS value is 1348 over 2, the next one is 63, 250 over 5, and 1200 over 10. Now, for the F value associated with treatments, it would be MS TR divided by MSE, 5.62 as you could see, and this value is equal to the F value associated with blocks, which is MS BL divided by the MSE. So our critical value, uh, if we want to calculate that, would have to be the F value. And we know that we have a significance level of 5%. We have degrees of freedom of 2 and 10. So therefore, Excel gives us a formula, which is F inverse. F inverse was 0 0.05, that's our alpha value, degrees of freedom, 2, 10, and that gives us 4.102. If we were interested in testing whether or not there's a difference between the students themselves, the blocks, then we could calculate a critical value. If we use the same 5% as our significance level, then we have the following f inverse point zero five comma and this time it will be five and ten so five comma ten because the numerator degrees of freedom would be for msbl which is for blocks so that's the degrees of freedom associated with blocks and it's three point three two p value is basically the we use f distribution as the function we give it the x value in this case the x value is your f value comma 2 comma 10 we have a p value of 0 0.023 
and in this case I think our p-value is going to be very small so it's f distribution we're going to use this 1 of 5 5 comma 10 whoa as you can see this says 2.5 e to the minus 8 which means that we have 7 um, minus 8 yeah, seven zeros and a two five, so it's extremely, it's almost zero. So that means that there is clearly evidence of a difference between the students themselves, the mean performance of the students. Because if you look, you see 530, 595, 458, uh, 560, 448, 436. There's clearly a variation among the students. But also, too, there's variation among the different portions because 502, 515, and 494, they're not all in the same range. So I think we, we definitely have evidence of a difference between them. So this is kind of how we would calculate all of the values that we need for this. I'm just going to pretend this up a little bit. And there we go. Looks nice. So that's the problem right here that we've just completed. And we have all of our answers. So clearly, we see that the our F value is larger than our critical value. So we would reject the null hypothesis. Also, that the p-value is smaller than 5%. So we reject the null hypothesis as well. It's important to know what these things are. So this would be your SSTR. This value right here would be SSBL, SSE. So these are the different SS values. Your degrees of freedom associated with treatments, blocks, and the error term, and the overall sample. Mean square associated with treatments, mean square associated with blocks, mean square associated with the error, and our F values, and remember the F values are, would be a ratio of two, um, would be certainly a ratio of two variances, two mean squares, so MSTR over MSE and MSBL over MSE gives us what we're looking for. So there you have it. This part right here, I'm just going to highlight that in a different color. Uh -huh. And to denote that there's a difference happening across here. A little lime green. And away we go. There we are. All right. So that's our problem, folks. Hope you understood what we were trying to do mm -hmm. All right, there we go. We're done. So I hope you understood this question and how Excel can make it relatively easy for you to uh, achieve this.